All right, cool. <clears throat> I was trying to send that email with the link for the Google form for the panel just before starting, but not fast enough. Anyway, uh, so I'll send it right after this. And uh, so hopefully, uh, if you have any ideas, uh, even if it's just a question, um, uh, and it will also include uh, a place to suggest panelists or persons to, uh, to answer that question. Uh, we'll collate everything. We'll try to find some common themes and, and, and address that um, during the panel session later. Um, maybe clinical trials and data science. Um, all right. So uh, this is a, a, a brief overview of the PQ Data Collaborative um, that we've been talking about in the last uh, day or so, um, where we are, um, where we want to go, um, and um, sort of our, our guiding principles. So starting there, guiding principles, we um, set out to create this um, EHR level granularity, multi-center, anonymized cloud PQ, data, uh, PQ database um, that was uh, open um, uh, to all participants uh, in the uh, collaborative to benefit. So we have this um, opt-out approach where if you are part of the PDC, you you are you're in. Um, if you want to participate in, in projects and you know our different uh, work groups, um, and if you don't, um, if you want to. Um, participate by putting data, but not necessarily uh, doing a specific projects. So that's also um, sort of acceptable. But that's the the idea is sort of this this open collaborative um, crowdsource group. Uh, it's free for participants. Um, it's supported by funding by the Whittier Foundation, the VPQ, and Randall Wetzel um, for now. And we're hoping that we will expand our our funding um, um, uh, streams also to to enhance uh, the ability to to grow and 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 build. Uh, um, uh, a larger collaborative. It's an open da data science approach. Uh, we share data, uh, share code, um, and, and one of the so the guiding principles is to ensure reproducibility of the work that we do. Um, we'll talk a little bit about sort of some of the infrastructure uh, ideas, and uh, Melissa will be talking about those. Um, also, to ensure not only reproducibility but sort of um, um, I don't know how to put it, the high quality data science research. How, how can we ensure that we are um, <clears throat> that what we do uh, in the PDC is is um, is at the highest standards. We also want to create a learning community, particularly for junior investigators, both clinicians and non-clinicians. So um, the clinician who wants to learn data science um, and the non-clinician data scientist who wants to understand um, what a MAP means means. And the vision statement for the PQ Data Collaborative that um, Randall. Um, um, mentioned yesterday is that we will promote the discovery and application of knowledge to improve the diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment of clinical uh, of critically ill children by developing rich, curated, standardized, multi-center data source to empower data science in pediatric critical care. A brief timeline. Uh, this These things don't happen overnight. Uh, probably the timeline should have started in, I don't know, 1997 when Randall first thought about a data collaborative. Um, uh, but fast forward, you know, 20 years later, um, we had a, a, a so I think it was in Palisi, a, a brief meeting, a discussion, like let's let's just get together and, and talk about this. Um, and uh, we had a, a VPQ sponsored uh, meeting in LA uh, in the spring of 2019. Um, this photo is very, very, um, very small, but uh, there's, I guess this is Chris Horvat, Reed Ferris, Tel Bennett, Tim Cornell, the boss, uh, Kurt Kennedy, Alicia, Myself, other folks. Um, so we met, we met and, and sort of uh, put together a, a sort of a, a little bit of a plan of how we were uh, going to uh, do this collaborative. Shortly after, um, and this was also after another policy meeting, um, we were able to rope in, um, I think, uh, Vinay and, and Akira, um, and then um, Adam and Serene, who, who joined the effort. Um, thanks to them and, and their, their effort and their interest in, in this collaborative, we sort of um, revised our technical documentation and a little bit of the, the structure of the database. Um, and then uh, COVID hit. So we didn't have a lot of activity during those three years other than just trying, trying to stay alive. Um, uh, but then r right after uh, COVID, um, we had this sort of flurry of uh, all these IRBs and DUAs that had been sort of floating around in the emails of all these um, uh, signatories in the different institutions that were, I guess, also trying to just survive, uh, came back and say, okay, let's start signing stuff. Um, so we, we got a flurry of, of 
IRBs and the UAs that got approved uh, in the winter of twenty uh, of twenty twenty, we're like, okay, we're 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 game. Let's do it. Um, so we we changed a little bit of the the leadership structure of the group since we were started to grow. We started to move faster, um, and um, uh, both myself and and Reed took the chair and vice chair of the scientific committee uh, for the group uh, at that point. Um, we uh, we entered in a partnership with um, uh, uh, a group Avenat to, that, to um, help us uh, stand up a um, cloud based uh, Azure uh, database. Um, and uh, after shortly after that, we um, we uh, got Jeff to to join us, and that sort of you know was I, if I had a lesson learned from all this, if you're doing a collaborative, get a program manager, get a good program manager, you're going to be. <laughs> It'll pay itself very pretty quickly. Um, so that also helped uh, with a lot of the documents that we had been talking about that never actually got it until uh, got made until actually he joined, like data governance and policies and procedures updated and things like that. Um, and then in the winter of twenty one, we we had the SQL, um, uh, the, the cloud based SQL Server um, ready to go. Uh, so since then, uh, so we're uh, ten sites currently. You can see the sites there. Um, uh, the the I think I mentioned. Probably most of the site PIs uh, from that photo and the others that join after. If I'm missing anybody, um, uh, let me know. That Daniel Tofik was also joined from from Stanford uh, to uh, as a co-site PI with with Tim, um, and um, and that and, and that th these have been the the sort of the players since then uh, to build this sort of phase one, which is sort of. Um, does this infrastructure work? Where are the kinks? There's been a lot of learning. Um, um, Opportunities, I would say, um, th throughout the process of, of where this type of data collaborative can can fail, and I think we we uh, we were right to take it uh, one step at a time uh, with these sites that had very engaged um, uh, site PIs and were willing to go through all the um, sort of the, the the difficulties and the hurdles and the um, you know imagine that photo that that Bob just put in about the the roadblocks in the way in the in the road just you know be able to scale those rocks and get to the other side. Because um, I think we've we've smoothed th things to the point where hopefully phase two is going to be much smoother. Uh, famous last words, um, but but that that will be able to um, to expand this in a, in a in a more reasonable way and uh, not knowing the uh, no, knowing wh which hurdles we're, we're probably going to be facing. Um, we have a website which was an uh, important uh, feat because we wanted to have something in the ether to um, to show that we exist. Um, so you can visit PeteStata.org. We got a little ambitious with the name. It's Pete's Data. Um and the, I'm not going to go into the details uh, here. Uh, maybe Alicia will, will talk a little bit about the pipeline. But but basically, we're the principles here is we have raw multi-site EHR data that we're receiving in a very flexible um, uh, data model that, that's internal to us, uh, but it's not constrained by data models that um, currently exist that are uh, great for for sharing um, tools and potentially for sharing uh, very concrete data sets like OMAP. Um, but are constrained in the sense that some of the variables that we're interested in, um, such as like um, the rate of a uh, vasoactive uh, inotrope uh, or uh, you know some, uh, I's and O's, for example, are very limited in those common data models. So we um, created a very uh, flexible, open, um, pediatric critical care centric data model that can then be uh, pared down and uh, constrained into one of these uh, co uh, common data models. Uh, particularly, we're interested in creating a version of the PDC that's, um, uh, that's OMA uh, CDM to uh, leverage it for all the other things that we can do in terms of uh, collaboratives, uh, use some of the tools that um, uh, I think uh, Jerry was mentioning, a lot of the tools that that that, um, that Odyssey has put out for OMOP, for, for example, um, data quality dashboards and things like that uh, but but we didn't want to constrain that from the beginning because that would limit us uh, the, the kind of questions that we would be able to pose to this data set particularly for critical care centric um, questions um, so the harmonization process again is is currently uh, using our internal um, model but but eventually uh, allowable very um, hopefully easily uh, mappable to something like OMAP um, we have uh, we're building uh, a series of quality assurance um, processes that that's going to be a big part of uh, of the next uh, phase of, of the collaborative. I'll show you some some of the things that we're doing right now with dashboards, um, and eventually uh, we'd like to also have some enhancement of the data, meaning creating um, um, 
severity of illness scores, uh, uh, organ function scores, and things that we can calculate on all these on all these children uh, at a given time interval, so that researchers can reuse that data without having to again go back and, and do that for every use case, but have that as part of the database and reuse. Um, some of the same computational phenotypes that we put for children and things like that, so that it's, uh, uh, it becomes a uh, reusable, um, enriched data set. And eventually that will become so these research, research data sets that we can use um, um, to answer our questions. This is the progress of the collaborative so far. Um, we started, phase one has 10 sites. All 10 sites um, have approvals, and um, eight of the 10 sites have submitted um, uh, the full data set for, for, the, for the schema, and two of the sites have submitted partial data. Um, I think we're six data that six sites that have harmonized data and four of them um, that have data merged at this point. And I'm going to show some of that data for those four sites. Um, and again, the data quality is part of what our next phase uh, for the, starting with those four and then with the uh, additional sites. Um, currently, for the eight sites that have submitted full data, we have um, about 151,000 um, ICU uh, hospital admissions with an ICU stay, um, and that uh, is uh, equivalent to about almost two million hospital days. Uh, and this, uh, uh, we've sort of um, calculated, estimated about uh, 865 million chartered events um, in the, in the current eight sites. So a lot, lots of data, and as Randall would say, lots of natural experiments that are happening in that data set that, that we should be learning from. So the next steps is we'll complete the data QA uh, for the first data set. Uh, we'll, we're planning our first publication um, that's going to speak to the to the infrastructure that we build, uh, the crowdsourcing approach, um, and potentially uh, some of the first use cases of the data, uh, probably validating some of the um, mortality um, prediction tools that have been developed by some of the members of the group. Um, we want to apply for federal funding for a specific pro uh, sort of project-focused funding. Uh, some of that grant proposal session this afternoon hopefully is, uh, is focused on on that idea of, of what, you know what big project should we be um, putting together into uh, into a proposal. Um, we want to expand to new sites. Uh, phase two. This is uh, this is the this next year's uh, goal is that we will open to any of you guys who are here that are not part of those ten current ten sites. Um, this is um, hopefully the year that we're, we'll be able to start um, um, uh, incorporating new sites and then expand uh, to other data sources. And that's a little bit of a discussion that we're going to have today about <clears throat> one of the breakout sessions about what what what's next after the EHR data. Is it physiological data? Is it biomarkers? Is it uh, imaging and 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 where 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 should we be looking at uh, for that those uh, sort of high impact um, uh, data sources that are going to help us move the needle and be at critical care. All right, I'm going to show you a little bit of a demo of our um, dashboard. That is that's part of our um, quality um, assurance. Um, 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 sort of pipeline, uh, but also we're hoping to use it um, as a way for for people who are members of the of the collaborative to be able to just query the data and have a little bit of high view of what of what we have. Um, so um, I must give credit to Alice, who's here in, in the front, who built the dashboard for us. Uh, and it's, this is still a better version. We're we're still making changes, but it looks excellent for now. I'm really happy how how it turned out. Uh, but you can see here sort of the. Uh, age distribution of our patients. We clearly have some outliers here, so where you can see some either data quality issues or some, um, you know, acceptance uh, policy issues in specific sites. <laughs> One of the two. Um, and we can see here the patients with more than a thousand day um, length of stays, which I know for for a fact uh, are true. Um, uh, mostly are not that. Um, and you have you know length of stay, and we can we can start you know sort of. Uh, uh, looking at, at this by, by different um, sort of sites, uh, you know, this is break, breakdown uh, specific uh, length of stay days, but you can, uh, you can imagine how you can start looking at this in different ways. You can normalize this, um, you can real, you know, to see which, which, uh, which sites have more, you know, uh, longer stays. Site three clearly is a winner here. Um, and then for the histograms, this is for the actual data. Um, so we have, uh, I don't know, it's like, 300 variables or so between lab tests and uh, vital signs and mechanical ventilator variables and whatnot. So you can look, start looking at, at some of the distributions and, and start looking for patterns of, of outliers here. Um, so for example, uh, this is pulse oximetry, but, uh, sorry, uh, heart rate by sight. Um, you can do respiratory rate. So you can see here, um, there's something wrong here already. Some, somebody has a, uh, so if you can, we can log scale it and you can r rapidly see this 
um, outliers here of, of one patient who has a negative respiratory rate, right, <laughs> of 4,000. Um, but you can take that side out, and then that's, if you take that, that side that clearly has that outlier, you can see that the more, much more normal distribution, and probably some of these are, you know, oscillated patients that are getting a respiratory rate charted. Uh, so maybe these needs some additional contextual, um, you know, data quality. Uh, clearly, this patient cannot be breathing 650, so probably an outlier there. But you know, with these tools of uh, being able to uh, to log scale, normalize, uh, we can start um, uh, being able to look at the at the distribution across sites, across patients, across age groups, um, et cetera, and, and that can be really helpful for for data quality and and, and ensure that we have uh, uh, good quality data for for the research. But just as a uh, let me see if I can uh, normalize here, base 10, but yeah. So for example, we have 2 million heart rates that are between 145 and 155 So uh, for, for one site. So it's a, it's a lot of data. Oh, that's H. It's OH, O by H. Okay, so less than 28-day kids have a lot of heart rates. Um, so that's the demo. Uh, any questions uh, uh, about the PDC or the data that we have? I'm happy to answer now. We can also discuss later. Um, and maybe we'll have the computer available during the break here if, anyone, if anybody wants to come and explore a little bit of the data that we have. And if you have suggestions of how we should be visualizing the data um, and, um, and some other ideas about how we can do this um, sort of visual analytics of the data that we have so far, um, we'll be very... Um, happy to receive that feedback. So we'll leave that in the, during the break. The computer will be probably here in the podium uh, for anybody who wants to, to come and, and, and check it out. Any questions right now? Or? I mean, what platform are you using for reporting? Is it Tableau or Homemade or Google Analytics? Um, it's Tableau. Plotly? Mm -hmm. uh, we just built this dashboard in the last two weeks, three weeks. So, so like, an, like a last push, like, let's get something out so that we can start showing what we have. Um, no, so the great question. No, so we started, so that's uh, part of the sort of the first um, um, data. So it's, it's EHR structured data. So we don't have EHR unstructured, like notes, reports, things like that. Um, so that's um, another topic of discussion for maybe later when we talk about what, what should this community should be focusing on for data that, that we want. Um, I think that the unstructured data obviously has the limitations of, of the um, eliminating the identifiers that can be very complicated. Um, and um, I mean, the, the PCAR network has done a lot of work on the identification. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Dean can, can maybe help us that if, if we as a community think, oh yeah, we need the notes because we, we're writing golden things in the notes, uh, then, <laughs> then yeah, then we'll, we'll put the effort. If uh, if you don't think your notes are that great, then let's focus on somewhere else. No, the last episode, the follow-up uh, was the unstructured data um, potential for you to include it in the initial RV applications and that are user agreement or no, no. So that would we would need we need to um, to update that. I think I think this is it's, it's doable then. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were, if you have an ICU stay, um, you get we get the data for the whole entire stay. Uh, so it doesn't have data for non-ICU patients. So it's a, this is an ICU database, but includes the pre and post uh, ICU data. Um, and the first question, uh, yes, the uh, Dr. Wetzel will want this to be updated every midnight, but it's not uh, probably not going to happen. Uh, the idea it is that it will be continued to grow, right? That, so so a lot of the focus that we've done for, and you're you're part of some of the collaboratives that that you know the the uh, sepsis work that we've done. Uh, those are oftentimes you know big efforts to get one data set in in a, in shape for you know nice big project and analysis and whatnot, and then that, you know, you can do reuse that data, but that's it, right? Um, the way we've uh, developed this and the pipeline and the idea of, um, of the PDC is that eventually we'll have some regular updated, up, uh, updating um, of the database, and then all the harmonization p uh, parts will, will be, a part of it will be, as new data comes in, is, how, is that data what we're expecting? Is it, does it, how does it compare to the gold standard of the harmonized data that we've, that we've built so far? 
Um, and, and so that's, that's part of the philosophy here is that we can continue to expand it. Now, one of the use cases, we've talk, been talking about clinical trials. One of the use cases could potentially be, um, you know, for, for sort of a low cost, you know, cluster randomized trials, for example, where we would receive data from, from the different sites with, uh, you know, de-identified whether the patient was, um, you know, in a site that had the intervention or not. Um, and, you know, we could potentially do that kind of analysis. Um, that would be, that's one of the, the use cases that have been um, suggested. And for that, obviously, we would need the, the updated data at a given, a given frequency. So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, a uh, couple of questions. Uh, you mentioned that, that the data model, I just have someone who's not yet in the group, but uh, that the data model is very flexible, that it's, it's your own, you know, it's a group mm -hmm. data model, that you can choose not to think like a model mm -hmm. and other things. How, this, how far this is from being a reality? The reason I ask is that. Nowadays, we participate in so many yeah. research collaborations that our teams, IS teams, data analyst teams, and our teams that actually pull the data from EHR, put in those data models and sent, yeah. are getting really, really tight. Yeah. And uh, very, very, the resources are very limited sometimes yeah. to all with all different research data models. So yeah. uh, where, where are you or the group is in, the, in this? Pipeline. Yeah, that's an excellent question. So, so uh, to answer that question, I will say uh, we start the, the ten sites that started this uh, in a very democratic, crowdsourced way. We decided to keep it this way because of the flexibility. Now, as we continue to grow, if we decide that it's um, sort of a, um, a the balance of of the benefit of being able to get more sites that have, for example, already you know um, OMAP from Picori or uh, uh, PitsNet um, uh, efforts already available. And they are they want to send us that standardized data instead of the the more com the our a more flexible model and we lose some granularity in the data but we gain more sites because they're more more flexible to do that that may be something that the group as a as a group decides that that's the way to go we get more data a little bit more constrained but that may be the may, may be the way to go I think that that it speaks a little bit to the philosophy here that it's a very much a scientific committee and um, sort of um, democratic in that way uh, for now this is what we thought would be um, more important to 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 really focus on the pediatric real care specific data elements that we really that we all care about a lot and the two examples that I put that Alma doesn't do very well right now fluids and uh, vasoactives and things like that uh, but you know maybe maybe we can work with uh, building up Alma up a little bit more to yeah yeah exactly we might need some funding for that Yeah. Right. So. Exactly. I think Ramesh and then Steph. Yeah, and that's. Uh, I know we have all the big two patients, but do you also go upstream, like the ED or for kids in the NICU, and then? Upstream? Yeah. So how far do you go long term? The the whole hospital stay, but not not prior hospitals. So the same patient can have multiple hospital stays, right. uh, and we'll have the the, the their de-identifier patient ID would be linked. We would know how many times they've been in uh, in the. In a, in a hospitalization that included an ICU um, from the beginning to the end of that hospitalization, including whether they, you know, I think the patient with a thousand days was a NICU baby that then went to the big U and lived there for three years. Um, so, so we'd have all that data, obviously, but, but it's, um, um, uh, yeah, so we, we, we wouldn't have information about other hospitalizations that are, do not include an ICU. That's a limitation. Steph? Yeah, yeah, that, yes to both. So I think that that's a, 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 a so another piece there would be, for example, um, say that we want to have a new data element included, which would be you know X or biomarker or imaging or whatever. We could reupdate the, the site could reupdate their data set that to include that that data all the way back to the initial uh, data pool and uh, have that as a data set. I, I think 
for as more, the more complicated, more more we are asking sites to do, I think we need the funding to to all this has been so far sort of grassroots, um, you know, owns people own people's time to to do this to do this mapping. A lot of us actually doing that internally or with data analysts that we're borrowing time from. Um, so I think that, but but we could do that. And for uh, for the labeling of events, for example, I think um, I mean it could be as as uh, time uh, intensive as, as somebody going through charts in their individual sites and submitting, you know, like, a, you know, this patient had this event at that time, you know, if you get enough money, you, you know, you probably can get people to do it. Uh, but other but also, for example, for a cardiac arrest, you could pr come up with a phenotype um, that includes, you know, patient who has a, you know, critical vital signs like heart rates less than, you know, 60, um, who got a administration of a one dose or more of, you know, a, a epinephrine, um, and something else, and that's your phenotype for a cardiac arrest. Um, if you generate that and we run it through the whole uh, I, uh, whole data set and we maybe do some internal validations uh, where we send it to your site and say, hey, this is your patient list with your de-identified ID that you know who they are because you have internal mapping in your site. Can you double check that those patients had an arrest at this time point in their hospitalization? You can go in and say, yeah, out of this 10, all of them had an arrest based on that phenotype. We validate that. Um, and that can become part of the of the enhanced data set. So the next time around somebody one has a cardiac arrest question, they don't have to do reproduce that, but they already have the Steph Brown cardiac arrest phenotype, you know, established, right? So I think that that's a little bit of that part is is the enhancing of the data that is reusable for all of us. Um, very uh, factor. Diagnosis. Yeah, all diagnosis included. Based on coding and discharge Correct. So Correct. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 And how we requested clinical diagnosis if you have them. And then there's a the call and there's a label or just a clinical or diagnosis. Yeah. Um so it's it's so that's a great question. It's a it's uh, normalized to the initiation of the hospitalization so all that all the Time is in uh, seconds from admission or something like that, um, and then we have the day of the, the year of admission. But we don't have time of the day. We don't have um, more granularity um, regarding dates, just because of the DN5 nature. Um, is there a schema that you would always go through the schema to what you use for the statistical data? The um, for so the the variables. The yes, and so we're going to be reusing on some of the code that we've done for that. The schema itself is a little bit different, but it's not but not hard. No. Yeah, but it's a great question. I mean, some of these things were happening at the same time, and so they diverged a little bit. And uh, you know, I got an email from Scott at one point. It's like, hey, well, you guys are doing like three th things in a different way. Um, so yeah, so we we're trying to harmonize all these efforts. Uh, but yeah, it it is the nature of of this initial phase where we we so had a little, little bit different. Yes. 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 So for example, the data quality pipeline where we're building a lot of these tools. Um, we want to reuse. I mean, it, that's going to take a lot of effort, and we're doing it already in three different. We've done in a little bit of for this first uh, sepsis phenotype work that we did. We're doing a lot of work with the uh, R01 sepsis work. Hopefully, we can reuse that those pipelines, right? And, and and whatever we do in in PDC, we can reuse it for the future pipeline. I, I think it, it it would be stupid for us to re you know redo that every single time. Um, Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes. Location? Not in we do have the, the the location of the patient. We know when they're in the ICU, when they're not in the ICU. Oh, yes. But we only ask for when they're in the ICU, when they're not in the ICU. So we don't need to track like who they go. Oh. When did they go from the ED to the floor? That's not. Yeah. But we could, could be easily, <laughs> easily incorporated. Yeah, potentially. I mean, if we have the data, we know which data elements each side is sending for for a standard variable. We can then say, hey, for this data, you know, this is your schema. You can, you know, uh, map it to this, you know, local federated um, schema, and we can then query it um, from from afar. I don't know that the federated model is the way to go. I think there's been a lot of comments about that being complications, uh, having its own complications. So, all right, maybe one more question or, Alan. Mm -hmm. 
well, it's not applicable because we don't ha we we haven't gone to the prior pa uh, step of getting their full data, so we don't go to the data queue until we get to that to that phase. So it's you need to it hasn't been done if you're in the last phase, and that's that's just about how we're putting that that dashboard. It's a uh, part of the. Uh, one of the things that we talked about as a media, as a scientific committee is to have transparency of what, what, what's the state of every single site. So uh, when we start every meeting every month, that's the second or third slide is like where, where, where everybody stands so that there's a lot of transparency of, for each site and keeps everybody a little bit more accountable. It's like, oh, my site. And I put numbers there, but in the meeting, it's actually the names of the site. So everybody knows <laughs> like, huh, Tim is slacking there. So, yeah. That's so. A yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to 